What's up you guys? Hope everyone's having a great day. We just got back from Brad's and if you missed our last video, we actually just measured bearing clearances on his VR4 3000 GT bottom end. We had complications with cylinder three and four. So we're actually fitting new rods so we can get the correct bearing clearance because on the previous engine or crank setup, it spun two rods and the rods are very out of whack and they took a lot of damage. While we're waiting on all that, now we get to start on our convertible 300ZX project. For those of you that missed, we just recoded and redid the full underbody, freshened it up, sanded it all to bare metal, and we brought it back. For today's video, we're actually gonna be working on getting the engine and transmission back in the car. Who knows, we could get it running. That's a very big possibility. But before we do that, we also have to get a fuel tank for the car out of my other parts car. Now that we're done with the shameless plug, we're actually about ready to get started on our Z. Before we get started, we actually need to go back into the parts dungeon and we need to look for a steering rack that's suitable for this car. I really hope I've got one in perfect working condition that we can slap in that's not going to leak. Because let's be honest, that's getting more and more scarce nowadays with these 30 plus year old cars. Sorry about the wing. I cannot get it down. Uh. <laughs> Let's go find our steering rack and let's get to work. We just grabbed our box of energy suspension steering rack bushings. We got them installed. Um, they were actually pretty clapped. That one's missing a lot of rubber off the sides. So this is gonna go in nice and fresh. We actually need to find a couple brackets so we can mount it down in here. I'm not sure what I did with them. We can ditch this soft line, but we actually have to find a high pressure line to put on it because this one appears to have broken off. So let's throw this in. There's nothing special than to get it lined up. Probably the biggest thing that there is to worry about here, if you look here in your steering gear, on this opposing side to where it clamps, there's like a double tooth. So instead of it being tooth, there's like a gap. So then there's a thicker tooth up here on your steering shaft and that actually slides in so it's keyed to fit a certain way. Don't just start banging it on there if you don't have it in the right position. Make sure to lube both ends up and clean them up real nice so that way they can stick together and you don't have any seizing issues in the future. For as boring as that is, let's go ahead and just put in the elbow grease and get that done. Got the rack in, that actually went a lot easier than expected. Now I think it's gonna be a good time to lift the car up. Well, we got the wheels off and we're hooking the tie rods up. I actually got something else that we can do that I found. I managed to find my brake calipers. I was very afraid that I sold them or misplaced them somehow, but thankfully I still have all three of the extra ones that I didn't have. Literally all we're gonna do here with this tie rod Put your nut on. We're not going to torque it just yet. We're going to go back over everything. But for now, that'll do just fine. Yeah, I definitely need to compress the piston. Now we just went and compressed the piston. There we go. Now we <laughs> probably should have got the mounting hardware first. You should do it. don't have the brake line over here yet so we need to go find that not only do we need to find the brake line for this driver's side we actually need to find an outer tie rod for the passenger side because there isn't one over there can't fight me back if it doesn't have a choice this right here is what victory looks like oh man did you not 15 minutes later since we started cutting in that last clip there you know there's one crucial thing i probably should have checked before we did all this if these threads are even good and lo and behold it's not uh, we just wasted 15 minutes of our life for absolutely no reason So, I don't know how well you guys can see, we actually had to trim this down because it was so beat up and mashed. This is actually like a brand new one that I bought a while ago and never swapped out on my slick top because of this. 
Now today, with the knowledge I've gained in the past couple of years, we have been able to put this thing to use instead of throwing it in the garbage. Granted, in hindsight, now, I think we can fix our other one. Since it was good, it just had a split boot. But we can always change that. Oh no, <laughs> our light just died. What a shame. Well, it's only a little frustrating. There's nothing crazy going on over here. Just a little bit. And we've still got these fuel lines over here that I chopped. And thankfully, this past Christmas, for whatever reason, my mom, even though I insist on her not buying me stuff, she insists. And she looked at my Amazon cart and she bought me a 50 foot roll of Gates barricaded fuel injection hose. <laughs> hey, I guess. Thanks, mom. I'll be using it for a while. Not only that, we actually hooked up our brake line to that junction box there because I totally spaced doing that. We got our grommet on our AC lines. And I realized one big thing we have to do other than the fuel lines before we drop this motor in. We need to get a wiring harness to put in this thing. I'm like 99% sure I have a really nice NA wiring harness that went with this motor to begin with. We can just plug and play and everything will work perfectly fine like it did before. I have intentions to swap out some connectors so we can freshen this harness up. Before we do that, let's just go ahead and put this manifold on so we can get pretty much this engine to where it's just ready to drop in the car. Thankfully, oh man. I totally forgot. If you didn't know, the difference between NA and TT headers is these middle bolts or studs are actually flip-flopped. Not only that, but we actually had to trim this stud for our turbo manifold. So we have three studs to pull and at least two to swap and one to replace. So to remove a stud, you actually have to use a double nut method. And pretty much you tighten the outer one on the inner one. And then once you have it snug enough, you use the inner one to turn the stud out. And that's literally as easy as the double nut method is. Cool, 10 minutes later, we got both of our studs switched, or at least flip-flopped. And now we can begin to fit our exhaust manifold. Pretty sure the torque spec here is like 37 to 43 foot-pounds. My torque spec's good and tight. <laughs> Just kidding. Follow your torque specs, guys. All right, now our manifold's on. Let's move on to the wiring side. So it's actually the next day, and well, we're about ready to go in. We got the manifolds in done last night. In done. <laughs> I'm dumb. But we actually, next step is we have our wiring harness here. Our wiring harness actually needs a couple of connectors with a little bit of attention. I believe it's just our six fuel injector connectors. The knock sensor is in good condition, and so are the idles. They don't have corrosion, and they actually have room to put the clips on still. However, the other injectors have the bright green minty freshness of death. Thankfully, I just bought a crazy deal 120k timing kit OEM right here. If you don't know, them things retail at like 700 bucks right now. I paid 325 shipped. Can't beat that. I'm super stoked, especially especially for our project coming in this weekend that I'm still super excited for. I don't want to say project. Let's just say something's going to come in that's going to really benefit us. What I was getting at is I was looking at that box last night to check before I went to eat and look what came in it. I actually do not have any good old style square connector connectors and I just happened to get a wiring specialties injector harness side so that literally gives us six perfect brand new connectors that we can crimp on or solder on and bring this harness back to its former glory let's go ahead and solder on five of them and then we'll be back to do our sixth one just so we get it down and get warmed up first not all of you guys were a fan of my last solder job now I've got five of them all wired up. We managed to heat shrink them all except one. So we actually are happy we didn't show you the first one because the first one's always the worst. What I'm happy we kept here is how each of these are labeled. And I put these all in the corresponding position so there will never be any confusion wiring this thing back up. At least Eric hopefully will thank me for this if he ever goes to do anything with it. Who knows, maybe he'll send it back to me to do 
whatever. Chopping the connector straight off. Now we always cut the thicker wire back about an inch, if not at least a half an inch. Sorry, I don't have you guys focus very well over here. Don't want to get anything on my iron. Now, I know you guys recommended the lineman splice. I really need to get a solder station for that. I mean, just to be a little more precise with all this, I'm pretty sure this is going to do just fine for now. It's one of the easier ways I've found to do it. Mesh them together. Silly me, do not forget your shrink wrap. I honestly have no idea where I was at. I just had someone stop by and get a fender. Oh no, I forgot to unplug my iron. Now we're going to warm up the wires and melt the resin. And we're going to feed some solder onto the tip and it'll just drop down. Now that the wires are cleaned up with some resin, I just realized it's flux, not resin. Sorry about that. Don't get the resin kind. Maybe that's what I'm trying to say. That's what comes with the Harbor Freight, and it's solid, and it's absolutely garbage. It's penetrated through all the way, and it's completely clean and solid. And we slide our heat shrink over it. I prefer a lighter. I don't know. A torch, I feel like, usually melts it a little too much. The big hindrance on this car Obviously, other than the drivetrain, which is super simple to put in, it's no big deal. It'll take me an hour, two hours at most. We need a gas tank, and let's just say the one in this was in less than favorable condition, and we needed another one. So we pitched it, but this car is actually being parted out, so we're actually going to have to take the gas tank out of this. Can't forget the mat. Matt never gets old. For any of you guys who want to know where to get it, property of Boston Beer. So, first and foremost, we're going to be knocking out the exhaust. Just slide out. Now let's pull the second one off and we actually have the same two kind of bolts up there at the test pipes. Pretty easy and self-explanatory. Full HKS cap back is off. We actually just took extra couple seconds for courtesy to pull our drive shaft. Those bolts can be annoying sometimes, but the way I usually set it up, it's not too bad. Let's hope this battery's charged enough. The whole outer thing is completely dry rotted and busted. Junk. Not going to drop it all the way. There's no need to yet. Let's actually get out of here and get the jack under it so we can remove it. We actually need to go remove the shocks or coilover upper bolts from the chassis. Then this will be ready to drop. Holy crap, the thing is completely loose. How have I been driving this thing? Wow, I honestly thought the saga of what has the previous owner done to this car stopped, but I was sadly mistaken. Don't forget, get any of these parts while you would need them. Let's lift the diff. I actually need to move this mat. I used the mat so it actually has something to roll on out here in the gravel. Blocks out, jack stands, and... Now since the chassis is supported, can actually yoink this one out even though it's already loose i need to put the gopro down for this this is scary see it never wants to let off easy it just wants to drop i'll take the wheels off once i get the whole thing to come down you know slash wheel speed sensor <laughs> these things hardly ever come undone ouch 
What is it hanging on to? There it goes. Just had to work it off. Now the cruddy work begins, draining all that fuel out. Now if you didn't know, two seaters actually have two drain plugs back here on the bottom side of the fuel tank. Four seaters unfortunately do not, but you can drop a four seater without dropping the subframe. So pros and cons to each. Jug secured. This is actually one of the older ones that don't have a filter on the top, so I can just dump it all in dirty and then filter it going into my other gas cans. <laughs> now we gotta get the stream right. We'll see just how full force we can go. And yeah, there's all the dirt. Oh, actually looks like it's draining quite well. Yeah, bunny shot. Just transferred over to the other jug. We're on our second fill up. Let's pull this off while we wait. Oh, <laughs> that works. Oh, there we go. It was, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> pride and I took the camera off of it. If you look at those, you can see it just twists and slides off. Pretty simple. Grab a 10 mil wrench, which some of these you can get with a socket or a ratchet, I should say. O ring appears to be good too. What the? What is that? Dude. Never before have I seen something like that. What in the heck is that? Hey, we're finally running out of gas. Just in time. We are almost to that fill level. Definitely done now. Almost got that laminar flow. Guys, I'm not sure if I just figured something out, you know, like that people don't know about. But I just used this because I didn't have pliers to compress. And that, and I didn't have to just worry about it. Kind of like vice grips or channel locks. That was super nice. What is this? some old rubber hose that turned hard because it was in fuel what the heck trying to siphon gas out i just do not understand here if you guys have any idea what that could have been drop it in the comments below yeah this thing should come out <laughs> there we go all fuel hard lines should be disconnected. So this rubber hose right here is actually what's holding it up. It's still attached, so it's just suspended in the air. Fuel tank should just drop at any moment. <laughs> gas tank in here and we end up getting all of our tools back in just in time for it to get dark and i don't want to make the big commitment and getting all this back in tonight and then still having to go get gas at what like three or four in the morning by the time it gets to that point maybe i'll get up extra early tomorrow and come out here and get a head start we'll see so it's the next day and while we let the gopro warm up we actually went ahead and we plugged in our wiring harness we actually had to pull the glove box out and we had to pull the AC condenser out and unbolt what we just hooked up with the grommet and bracket. Pop it out for some access, drop the harness through, plug it in, and then hook everything back up. But I think we're going to use this flywheel, potentially this clutch. If not, we'll run this flywheel in this brand new exity clutch that we have right here. Now we can put a flywheel on. Grab your hardware. And now we snug the flywheel bolts up, 69 foot-pounds, by putting a breaker bar on the crank bolt. Don't forget to go back and double check. There's something I don't see people do a lot when I see them change a clutch or show how to change a clutch is the alignment process. 
maybe they expect you to know but once you get your clutch alignment tool into place if you watch here it can actually wiggle up and down slightly so you always hear people complaining or you know struggling on lines black for a better word i use complaining but they say they can't get the transmission in they're having all the troubles they they just can't do it likely this is why so install your pressure plate just as you would on your alignment dials and then torque it to spec just kidding thread all your pressure plate bolts in and as you snug them up to get it tight if you move it all the way down i'm trying to pull this out it won't come out pull it all the way up it won't come out you place it right in the middle to where it comes out as easy as possible and that's how you align your clutch so as you slowly tighten this down make sure this is aligned and stays in position where it just slides out easy and that's how you make it easier on yourself for installing your transmission because then it just slides right into place and i usually set mine at 30 to 32 to be safe then recheck your torque all done yeah see that don't even make a noise it's so good it's officially time to lift the motor into the car six months later oh it's finally happening <laughs> finally on to the fun part it's currently 11 19 <clears throat> 11 20. we still haven't even got the engine moved over here let's see how long it takes us to install the engine and get it fully set into place I just realized we have the hoist right here instead of up here, so I really hope we're actually going to reach far enough and don't have to pull this dash bar off. check the time it's been six minutes even with our little hiccup of not being able to fully extend this thing and get our full reach it only took six minutes to drop it in <laughs> we've still only got room to improve now honestly at this point this video footage is probably an hour long we still got quite a ways to go i know you guys have seen me do this quite a bit of times we've got transmission we've got a lot of stuff to do here to kind of get this in a presentable position before we drop the subframe to put the gas tank in it so since we got a lot of work let's cut to the chase we'll make it easy on you guys got everything all hooked up on the engine transmissions bolted up wiring harness i should say is all hooked up we haven't done the intake piping and the radiator reason behind that is i thought there's no way we're getting this thing fired up through all this there's seriously so many other things, little things that we need to take care of before that. We have to get the thing to stop before we can fire it up. I mean, we don't have to, but we need it out of here as well. So to wrap up this video, let's get the gas tank in, which I already took the liberty of dropping the subframe. Well, how well you can see, trans is in. We're literally just going to need to hook the drive shaft up to make it move. We got to find out if we can use an auto or manual, hopefully an auto. Yeah, we've spent too much time trying to get this where it's at. I had high hopes of getting it started, but it's not going to. Next video, 100% we're going to get this thing started. I have, we got zero doubts. Let's pull this, I guess not pull this, but let's put this tank in. We did just replace both of these lines. We got them lubed up so they'll go on a little bit easier. Now it's just time to, uh, you know, muscle it in. We actually need to remove those hard lines from that tank. So that way we can put these ones on. Lifting this is gonna be the biggest difficulty. So we grab a piece of wood to put under it and we're gonna to try to lift it up 
kind of hold it into place before we can actually get these uh, things here for the gas tank like girdle. I'm really not even worried about the fill up tube. That's going to be a cake job. I'm just worried about the tank right now. for now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. I completely forgot I was recording here. I've been using this hose and this hose clamp to actually hold this thing up. At least assist me. Now I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to get these hoses on with it where it's at. It's holy crap. This sucks. We'll be back once she's in. I think we're almost there. Be at least got the tank kind of a uh, somewhat latched. <laughs> Gas tanks, man. Oh, I can finally take a breath success we're officially done with the worst of all of this oh it's so relieving so now with great success in this video at least to me personally the engine's in all strapped up ready to go minus exhaust motor mounts shifter drive shaft obviously we got to get the rear end back in this thing i'm not worried about that because i can't do that yet i'm sure i can but I want to have the most access here as possible and I actually need to replace that O-ring for the fuel tank. Thankfully we got everything in. Yeah, the tank's a little cruddy compared to everything, but it's in. If uh, I somehow missed the editing, the best way to get this to stay up is as you pull it up, feed this through and move your hose clamp so it can't fall back through. Next, we will be getting the coilovers on this thing before we put the subframe in. But like I said, I want to wait till we get that fuel tank O-ring because why work backwards? Hopefully tomorrow, but fingers crossed. It's Sunday. Who knows? Some, they're iffy on delivering Sundays. But honestly, yeah, I think next video, this thing's indefinitely getting fired up. I feel bad. I wanted to get it fired up now, but you definitely can't if you don't have any fuel in the gas tank. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Sorry we couldn't actually get to a certain point and finish this video. I know it stinks, especially when I'm trying to focus on that now. But if you guys haven't, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe down below. Stay tuned for more content. We will catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Sorry to give you guys another second outro. I think we did this a video or two back, but we actually were supposed to edit the video, post it yesterday. I know I've been slacking on my uploads. I've just had a lot of opportunities coming up lately and well I can't let them go to waste and well not only have we resupplied completely on videos to make and work to do we actually came across a really sick deal and a really cool project that is honestly going to give us probably at least two thousand dollars in bonus parts a motor and potentially like eight grand so last night or yesterday we went down to Kentucky and we scooped us up a 1995 twin turbo 300ZX. Emerald green, cobalt green, whichever. We got the nice green with the pearl and I am so happy that we got this thing. It's got the puke peanut butter interior, but it's got receipts and all kinds of work done to this vehicle over the years. Five speed, of course. And this is my first non-door mounted seatbelt car. A couple goodies this thing has. We actually have a Greddy SP1 exhaust. Yeah, we got a Greddy finally, boys. Not only that, if you didn't know, twin turbo wheels are wider in the back. They've got a little bit of dish compared to the front. We've got some nice still in intercoolers with intercooler ducts to fit the turn signal. This is actually not a polyurethane bumper. 
I'm pretty sure this is a KVD. Yeah, this is a KVD fiberglass bumper. So this is way more rigid and less forgiving. Who knows, it may be better. Uh, not only the bumper, we've got us some HKS, super squinchal blow off valves. And another really cool thing about this, other than the fact that I got it for an absolute steal. Yes, it's a factory twin turbo chassis. It's got electronic hikas, so we know we don't have to worry about all that nasty stuff up in the bay. And another little bonus, we've got some Power Tricks coilovers. So there's all kinds of goodies on this thing, all kinds of different parts and, you know, just stuff that we can use. So ecstatic that we got this. We've got big plans for this. We aren't parting this chassis out. Sorry, you guys. I know some of you really want some parts, especially turbo parts. I can't do it. I just can't bring myself to do it. It's a 95. It's got a highly desirable motor, at least set of heads. I think we're taking the motor. That's all I'm going to give you for a tease today, you guys. I know I'm sorry. I'm terrible for that. But stay tuned. We've got a big pretty much redo coming on that car. Next priority is this white car. We need to get it turned and burned. We decided we're not keeping it. We got too much stuff going on. We got to send this thing. It sucks, but hopefully the next owner will sell it back to me one day so I can still have this, you know, titled car. We'll be working on this soon, too. We got to get this thing to roll first. But well, we actually did finish up the other day in the barn. We got the fuel tank in and the subframe is not mounted, but the subframe is up there. We're ready to put our coilovers on before we slap it all back together and lift the subframe the rest of the way up. Technically, maybe next video will be a convertible video and then a twin turbo and white 3333Z video. Sorry for the secondary rant. I figured you guys would like to see that. I didn't feel the need to record its own video because, well, honestly, it's on the back burner a little bit. We got some other stuff to do. For those of you guys who do watch to the end, thank you. You guys get the deeds. Sorry for everyone else. You should have watched. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.